The framing for our new walk-in hoop house is now complete and we're ready to cover it with 6 mil greenhouse plastic once temperatures fall below freezing. Today I'll share how I built the wood and PVC frame. I'll focus mostly on basic design and construction rather than getting bogged down in measurements and other details that are specific only to this project. The hoop house is built over a 13 by 9 foot raised bed where we're growing a variety of cold hardy crops. The end walls are made of wood and they conform to the shape of the PVC hoops. This end wall has an opening for a door that I hope to build later today. And this end wall has an opening for a window that I probably won't install until next year because of time constraints. The hoop house has three and a half foot vertical side walls which maximize our limited space and allow us to have cold frames and low tunnels right next to the wall. All walls are reinforced with diagonal bracing and have plenty of wood to attach greenhouse plastic. The raised bed is made of untreated pine and cedar, but the hoop house wood is pressure treated pine that's certified safe for use in raised beds. Though certified safe, it doesn't come into contact with garden soil. Instead, it's attached to the outside and top of the raised bed. Now let's move on to the construction of the hoop house. First, to help avoid repetition, I'll cover some basics that apply throughout the project. I used a miter saw, circular saw, or jigsaw to cut wood. I used a pipe cutter to cut PVC and conduit. And I cut rebar with a hacksaw. I always use deck screws to attach wood to wood and PVC to wood. I drilled pilot holes for these connections with a countersink bit. I drilled pilot holes for PVC to PVC connections with a standard drill bit and joined them with nuts and bolts. I always measured twice and cut once and checked horizontal surfaces for level and vertical surfaces for plumb. Finally, I made sure all rectangular structures were square by ensuring diagonal measurements were equal. Now let's move on to where the project began, the west end wall, where I framed a door opening that's about two feet wide and just high enough for me to walk through without bumping my head. The doorway was framed with two by fours on the sides, two by twos on top, and a 2x4 on the bottom. I centered the door frame on the raised bed and attached it to the outside, with the 2x4 on the bottom flush with the top of the raised bed. To provide additional support to the top of the door frame and strengthen the connection to the raised bed, I attached 2x2s to both sides of the door and to the raised bed. To reduce rocking, I fastened scrap wood to the raised bed and door frame. I also used a piece of scrap cedar to prevent water from getting between the door frame and raised bed. With the door frame in place, it was time to build the rest of the end wall. I started with the corner posts and the diagonal bracing. For both corners, I first attached a 3.5 foot 2x4 corner post to the raised bed with just one screw. I then attached a 45 degree diagonal brace along the side wall and then one along the end wall. With both braces in place, I secured the corner board to the raised bed with two more screws. I then attached a 3.5 foot 2x2 to each side of the door frame and connected the corners to the door frame with 2x2s as shown here. I left a little gap here where I later attached sidewall framing. To finish the basic end wall framing, I temporarily installed a PVC hoop marked where the hoop intersected with the vertical 2x4s of the door frame and cut the 2x4s to size. The PVC then easily fit over the 2x4s. This is what the west end wall looked like at this stage of the project, minus one of the diagonal braces which I hadn't installed at the time the picture was taken. After completing the west end wall, it was time to move on to the east end wall. Construction of the corner posts and diagonal bracing was exactly the same, so I'll skip that and move ahead to when I installed this 2x4. I cut the 2x4 to length and notched out both ends so it would fit nicely onto the corner posts. I left enough space on the ends to accommodate the sidewall framing. I installed two 2x2s to support the 2x4. I then attached 2x2s to the top of the 2x4 and secured them to both the 2x4 and lower 2x2s, as shown here. 
To complete the framing for a window, I installed these 2x2s to create an opening that will eventually accommodate a window, which given time constraints I probably won't put in until next year. Next, I temporarily put a PVC hoop in place, marked where the pipe intersected with the vertical 2x2s, and cut them so the PVC would easily rest on top. This is what the east end wall looked like at this stage of the project. With the end walls complete, it was time to frame the side walls. Each side wall has a 2x4 that runs the length of the hoop house and is supported on its ends by the corner posts. The middle is supported with another post and the corners are reinforced with diagonal bracing. Let's take a closer look. Starting out, each corner post had a space here to connect to a sidewall 2x4. I added an additional 2x2 support here on each corner. Notched out the 2x4s on the end and secured them as shown here. To provide additional support, I added a post to the center of each sidewall. Finally, I added 45 degree diagonal bracing to each corner. This bracing significantly increases the strength and stability of the hoop house frame. With the basic wood framing complete, it was time to install the 3 quarter inch PVC hoop pipes. I decided to go with 5 equally spaced hoop pipes, spaced about 3 and a quarter feet apart. I wanted to keep the transition from side wall to arch nice and strong, so I decided to use a continuous piece of PVC. But I needed to do something to keep the PVC from bowing out on the sidewall. So I decided to use rebar and conduit to reinforce the sidewall. At every hoop location along the sidewalls, I drove five feet of rebar threaded through conduit into the ground until it was just at the bottom of the sidewall 2x4. Three quarter inch PVC fits nicely over half inch conduit. And over this short span, rebar and conduit are very rigid and more than enough to prevent bowing. They also provide excellent vertical support for the hoops. Next it was time to install the hoops. To get a hoop of the desired length, I had to trim 8 inches off of two pipes and then join them together. I probably should have used a PVC coupling to connect two pipes, but instead I connected them by bolting them to a 6 inch piece of electrical conduit as shown here. After preparing all five hoop pipes, I installed them by slipping them over the conduit and rebar on the south side wall and then on the north side wall. To finish securing the pipes, I attached them to the side wall frame, to the end walls, and to the raised bed with PVC clamps. Next I installed three PVC pipes along the length of the hoop house to keep the hoops aligned and to provide additional support between the hoops. I installed one right down the center and two between the center one and the side walls. I should have drilled the pilot holes before installing the hoops, but I didn't. So I held a bucket underneath to prevent PVC shavings from getting into the garden. I attached them with nuts and bolts. I attached the ridge pipe first and then the other two pipes. Here's a good look at the hoop house at this stage of the project. Finally, I needed to make sure that I had enough surface area to attach the greenhouse plastic to. I started by installing these 2x2s, which are attached to the wood frame here and here, and to the PVC here and here. Next, I made sure the end walls had a continuous flat surface along the bottom where the plastic will be secured. Finally, I attached scrap cedar between the hoops on the sidewalls, again to provide a surface where the plastic will be fastened. Here's a look at the hoop house at this stage. Well, it turns out I didn't have time to finish building the door before wrapping up shooting for this video, so I'll have to cover that in the next update. In that video, I'll also cover the hoop house with plastic, as well as share the total project cost and ideas on how to lower the cost and potentially improve the design. As we close, I'll share pictures of the hoop house at this stage of the project.
Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <laughs>